So she said yes, which was a bit of a surprise. I thought she'd say no, definitely. But I asked her, and I'll pop the unexpected answer. Yes, I will come to your house for dinner. Now, this is a big event because, one, I've never actually had dinner with a girl before, and two, especially when my parents are not home. I'm not expecting anything to happen. I'm not, I'm not even hoping. I wouldn't even know what to do if something were to happen, but just to spend some time alone with her. Me and Wendy Malvin, the cutest girl in school, in my opinion. You get the point. So anyway, my plan is working out until she has the condition, only if you promise to cook. Cook? I can't cook. Why didn't I say DVD? Come to my house, watch a DVD. Microwave popcorn. Easy. Dinner? Whoever thought of dinner? Sure. And what would you like to eat? Please say party pies. I know how to cook party pies. I cooked them for my seventh birthday. I didn't even burn them. Too bad. But then, she said, the death sentence. Lasagna! <laughs> then she looks me in the eyes and gives me the final warning. And don't you buy it frozen and be heated. I'll know. I won't be happy. And you don't want to make me unhappy. Then she gives me a little smile, spins around, runs away. The sun bouncing off of her red curls. So let's recap. Firstly, she said yes. Wendy Malvern said that she would come to my house for dinner. That is a positive. We've always got to focus on the positives. But in the negative column, what do we have? Lasagna. I have to make lasagna. How the hell do you make lasagna? I can't buy it or she'll know and she'll probably never speak to me again. So I'm going to have to make lasagna. But not just any lasagna. This is going to have to be the perfect lasagna. So I decided to consult the experts, the women of my family. Luckily, I've got a big family with lots of women. Well, if I told you, then it wouldn't be a secret, would it? Firstly, I went to see Cousin Carol. She lives in Carlton, so she must not have made this up. I suppose it would be hard to share with you, but only a little. Did I mention we called her Crazy Cousin Carol? My mother, that's your Aunt Susanna. Never made me lasagna when I was a little girl, so before I met Massimo, my secret to making the perfect lasagna was to go down to Benedict's on Ackland Street. Isn't that in St. Kilda? Last time I checked. I thought you'd find the best lasagna here, Carlton. Oh, are you kidding? I go down to Benedict's, I pick one up, remove it from the foil tray, decorate it in my own special floral lasagna dish, pop a sprig of basil on top, and voila! There was the perfect lasagna all served up and ready to go. I'm not allowed to buy it. It has to be homemade. Homemade? Oh, then I'll have to tell you about Massimo. Massimo, Massimo, Massimo. Delicious, darling Massimo. He was an absolute master in the kitchen. As well as elsewhere, please report. <laughs> <laughs> A regular chef extraordinaire. And he made a lasagna that even rivaled the one from Benedict's. Can you remember the recipe? Right this time. Firstly, he would tell me to have a lovely bottle of red wine on hand to use as a reduction for the sauce, but also as a tipple for oneself. I always get to the mood for working on the storm in the kitchen, as well as other places, <laughs> most people say. Red wine. How old are you? Sixteen. Oh, okay, well, it's good to start now. You have three fresh <laughs> herbs, that's non negotiable, and three types of cheese. All full fat and don't be stingy. And lots and lots of garlic. Add a pinch of cinnamon too. That's a special secret. Read what you got. Uh, red wine, herbs, fresh cheese, three types of garlic, and lots and lots of cinnamon. <laughs> Perfect. Away you go. <laughs> Isn't there anything else? Golden squares of lush tender pasta. Must smell with make on. I'd sit on the kitchen bench and watch as he ground and rolled the pasta down to submission. Then he would take his mother's gorgeous little pasta roller. So sweet, all the way back from the 1950s, Napoli, to roll out the dough in the first setting possible. They would be transparent and melt in your mouth. And they were never just multiple, they were ten at least. But the hardest thing about making the perfect lasagna, Massimo told me this as we lay under the stars one day, is that you should stop yourself from eating it on that first day. Let it cool, put it in the fridge, and just let it sit for that first day. On the second day, does it come into its own? On the second day, does it truly reveal its maximum flavor potential? Then on the second day, you put it back into the oven to reheat. 
and then enjoy it. If you enjoy it, other people will taste the enjoyment, the love and every forkful, and share it with friends and family. The perfect lasagna will never be perfect if it's a rule by one person. You know, last thing I would sing along to old Dean Martin songs from the very When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a long day. Will you dance in the kitchen and spin me around and around and faster and faster? Did you get all that? I'm up to the part about the little possum. I'm exhausted. Go ask Andy Preston. <laughs> I'm not sure why they called Auntie Cressida Auntie. She wasn't my mom's sister. I don't even think she was related to my mom at all. But we still call her Auntie. She lived with Auntie May in North Coast. She wasn't my Auntie either, but we called her Auntie too. First and foremost, attention to detail. The tiniest thing can make the biggest difference. I can't explain it to you, but that's the difference. Just that tiny bit of chili had that special tank and made it stand out for the rest. The difference between a good lasagna and a great lasagna lies with the richness of the sauces and the subtle nuances of the herbs used. The bolognese sauce needs to be brimming with full tomato flavor in order to get color that stains the plate. To obtain this, you have to use a lot of tomatoes. By boiling down the liquid, the flavor develops. Bidding for two with a sprinkling of thyme will also give the sauce a subtlety of aroma. Tammy, never roast a good lasagna. All good things take time. You don't give a lasagna ample time to incubate. All your efforts in making it were about to waste. Be patient, but don't leave it too long. Otherwise, it'll get hard and stale and lose its succulents. Timing is very important. What would a lasagna be without a gloriously pale beige meal sauce? Oozing between the layers of pasta and augmenting the meatiness of the bowl of maize sauce. Everything in moderation. I know a meal likes for lasagna very creamy and cheesy. But you'll get sick of it quicker that way. Or if you do, I will. My special ingredient is a touch of great nutmeg for surprises with its vague and nutty nuance. Are you talking about me? <laughs> Practice makes perfection. Some people get it right the first time. Some people take ages, but when they do finally attain perfection, they realize it is fully worth the wait. Others never get it. It doesn't mean they give up, they just keep trying. When assembling a lasagna, the quantities have to be sufficient enough to make three layers each of pasta, bechamel, and bolognese. And to finish a layer of lasagna and drizzle of oil and into the oven, there has to be layers, like an onion. Some people eat their lasagna that way. <laughs> they do! First they fill out the top layer, then they work their way down. The more layers you add to your lasagna, the more enthralled these unique layer by layer lasagna consumers will be. A lasagna that scrimps on the amount of sauce between the layers will always leave an unsatisfied feeling. There has to be enough sauce to bathe the sheets of pasta and yet not leave pools of liquid in the base of the dish. The lasagna has to be firm enough to cut into rectangular blocks that lift easily from the dish, but soft enough to cover gently on the eater's plate. Mouthful of lasagna, satisfaction supreme. Keep it interesting. Throw in some new ingredients every now and then. Add some spice. Variety is the spice of life. Tease and bake the taste buds. Leave them wondering, ooh, that was an interesting situation. What was it? Go with your impulse, your gut feel. If you feel like having more cheese, go for it. This is your taste buds. They know what they're about. They're inhibited by your other organs. Be patient. And you must follow through with the reactions. Tantalize them and satisfy them. Never leave them high and dry. It's poor form. And most important of all, never get complacent. You must always give your utmost care and attention every time you make a lasagna. No one loves a slapdash trick, do they? And if something goes wrong, never hesitate to act. It's never a one man or a one woman. Show. Thanks, Andy Cresta. Andy Man. You're welcome. I believe you're searching for the secret to making the perfect lasagna. Yes, Auntie Jennifer. Then why haven't you come to see me? I was going to. I may be a senior partner in one of the top legal firms in the city, but I can still make the best lasagna in Melbourne. Meet my office, Thursday, 9.45. Yes, Auntie Jennifer. Lasagna is an overused and much abused dish. It's found in many of the pubs in the very rarely is it done properly. 
let alone well. Lynch Mullen is just a nasty, runny, bolognese sauce poured over the layers of pasta with cheddar cheese melt on top. Or it's microwaved and served as lukewarm mush. I'm a lasagna aficionado, and I know a good one, well, a bad one. And the best one I've ever had is the one I make myself, of course. What makes it so superb? Let me share with you my lasagna secret. The first and most important step is to get the bolognese sauce right. This requires premium Colonel's <coughs> beef mixed with some minced pork. Add to that oven roasted capsicum, Roma tomatoes, bacon, onions, tomato paste, enough garlic to flavor strongly without overpowering, <coughs> and a decent half bottle or so of good quality red. Are you warm enough to drink? Scratch the line. Add a teaspoon of sugar and a number of vinegar to help round out the flavors. Now the pièce de résistance of the sauce is the fresh herbs. Some oregano, thyme, basil, and a couple of bay leaves. That's just what Auntie Cressida said. Did she? That was a little pressy. Good. Allow the bolognese to simmer for a few hours to let the flavors expand and merge. Then, <coughs> you have to make your big Chanel sauce. I bet Auntie Cressida didn't tell you this. Put an onion instead of with cloves in the milk to allow the flavors to mix. And make sure you heat the flour and the butter separately before blending in the milk. Now you're ready to start compiling your masterpiece. Start with a layer of bolognese on the bottom of the pan, not pasta first, bolognese, and then a layer of pasta. And forget that crap about homemade pasta. Bought pasta is just as good. Let the experts handle that component. And then after you add on your layer of meat sauce, put a layer of feta and mozzarella cheese. And then repeat those layers until you fill the dish with your last layer of pasta. Then add enough bolognese sauce to just cover it, and then pour in your base up. Add some grated mozzarella and Parmesan cheese, and make sure it's freshly grated to ensure the maximum flavor. And then put it in the oven, and let the cheese on top melt, and then go a little crusty. Microwaves make mushy messes. I already said that. And then tick in the box, we'll have first class lasagna. Sounds delicious. And she loves me. Make it? Are you kidding? Why don't I have time to make all that? <laughs> and then I'll just have her type that and press it to you later. I have to get to court. She's a very busy woman, Miriam. But she loves our one thing. The most important ingredient. Love. I come from a big Italian family, and we all get together to make a family lasagna. Everyone has to bring something, their own special ingredient. Basil, cinnamon, parmesan. Each ingredient also adds a key ingredient, love. No good meal is without it. It's amazing to hear all the voices gathered together in my mom's kitchen. Young, yeah, old, laughter, and wine. Making the family lasagna brings all the generations together. The lasagna recipe that my family has followed for generations brings all the women together to make a meal for their family. As everyone gets older, making lasagna becomes less and less. We see you once a week, now we see a month, but we never make lasagna alone. Tomatoes are homegrown, and we make a day out of preparing the feast. My role is to dice the tomatoes, very fine and mixed in bowl of maize. My grandma was at the head of the table, and from where I sit, you can see how proud she is of us adding the layers of pasta and covering them in cheese and tomatoes. You know, I sometimes think to myself, I would never turn your country. Many generations will continue the tradition. You know, some people think growing up in a family of traditions would have been boring. But I now see my grandma who said it was so important. One day I'll make the lasagna in my kitchen. And my mom will sit at the head of the table with my grandma will sit. My eldest daughter will nice the tomatoes. So, get serious. No, don't say a word. I can just tell. Look about you. Question is, what are you going to do about it? Does she know how you feel? Perhaps it's time for a romantic gesture. What's the matter, Auntie Violet? Just Violet, please. You know how I hate that word. It makes me sound so old. Violet is a dramatic word. Very dramatic. What do you mean, not her romantic gesture? You and your generation, let's just say it doesn't involve a test. It's up close and personal. A romantic 
gesture can be anything that shows your beloved that she's the one. Like what? I don't know. You could take her for a moonlit stroll or serenade her. You mean sing? Well, what is she like? Lasagna. I hope it's vegetarian. She didn't say it. So cook for her then. Cook her lavish feast. Maybe blindfold her. And then when she opens her eyes, your romantic gesture unfolds. A scumptuous Italian meal with fresh crusted bread, a crisp salad, and a gourmet vegetarian lasagna, eggplant and zucchini. Oh, well, make this night special, delectable, like the lasagna should be rich and memorable. There, romance and the aroma of honesty and thoughtfulness. Sprinkle with a bit of spice and enjoy it slowly, as you mean to enjoy her. Antiviolet, sixteen. So was I once. <laughs> so, I've been to see all my aunts, Carol, Cressida, May, Violet, and Jennifer, and Monica had told me about her amazing family tradition of making lasagna. But now I was more confused than ever. Did I need nine layers or ten? Parmesan or ricotta? Nutmeg or cinnamon? I needed to speak to someone my own age. My sister, Jasmine. Why didn't you ask me before? Lasagna is my favorite dish and one of my best culinary achievements. And the best thing about when I make it? is that it's different every time. I like to call it adventure cooking. Cooking? Adventure cooking? It's great. Haven't you ever tried it? You know all the basic ingredients, but you throw away all the scales, the exact proportions, and the recipe books. I'm a mood cooker. If I feel like spice, I'll put in spice. If I'm feeling textual, I'll add extra cream and cheese. If I'm feeling fat, I'll use light cream, light cheese, light milk, and extra trimmings. Now, because the sake is my favorite dish, I've eaten it a lot over the years, and somewhere along the line, I even eat on it. So now we need to break it down with a nice fresh garden salad and dressing. Again, choosing the dressing by food. And I find that gives me a perfectly balanced meal and leaves me completely satisfied. Probably because it now has all the five main food groups in it, somewhere. And I don't feel guilty for complete overindulgence. People would argue and say I'm completely crazy being an adventure cooker. <laughs> Mom says I should have been banned from all kitchens because it's too eventful. I've set fire to the oven more than once. But I just put all that down to a learning curve. And once you're over that and discover the boundaries of the science of cooking, which I was never really that good at, you can freely enjoy what you love without ever getting sick of it. You know the best thing about lasagna? What? Even the worst lasagna tastes good. <laughs> So, the big day arrived, and the night before I stayed up very late, making a list of all the ingredients I would need to buy the next day. I worked my way through all my notes from my meetings with Carol, Cressida, May, Monica, Je Jennifer, and Jasmine, and Monica, too. 8 p.m. became 10 p.m. 10 p.m. became midnight. At some point, I fell asleep, right on the kitchen counter. Here it is. Keeping up with the goosinis, so to speak. But Monica didn't mind. Soon as I was off the kitchen counter, they were cooking up a swarm. Carol brought Massimo's 1950s pasta roller. He gave it to me. Jennifer brought the Roman tomatoes, which Monica was sent to David Jones, especially to buy. While they brought the red wine, though not a lot of it actually went into the sauce. <laughs> Cressida brought the nutmeg, and May brought lots and lots of garlic. He's trying to kiss the girl, may not suffocate her. Even Jasmine told me. Can't you at least try adventure cooking? What's that? What does it look like? A potential controversy over vegetarian and non-vegetarian lasagna was avoided by Auntie Jennifer negotiating a settlement. Girls, girls, only one of each. All that was left for me to do was stand back and watch. I guess I really wasn't cheating. Wendy said it had to be homemade, but she never said I had to make it. <laughs> As I stood there, watching my aunts and Monica and Jasmine were, I finally realized I knew the secret to making the perfect lasagna. It was just like Monica had said, 
Love. 